Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here uh, for the last panel of the evening. I would like to invite the panelists for this uh, panel, Max, Vasily, and Simon. You can please join me on stage. Thank you. I think I'm going to take uh, Yaka's approach. I'm going to be, you know, standing up so that I can enjoy. No, 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 no. Because if I sit down, well, if I stand up, I can be 20 minutes at, at your level because uh, you're all very tall. So we have Max, is the CEO of uh, CoinSpade. Then we have Vasily, he's director of uh, gaming accounts at uh, Trustly. And uh, Simon, director of gaming at OK2Pay. So uh, the panel today will be a two year uh, sort of uh, recap of what happened over the past two years um, in FinTech payments um, industry. And how does that, you know, how, how is it impacting the, the gaming industry as well? Um, guys, would you like to present yourselves, what you do, what your companies do as well? Let's start with Max. Uh, yes, um, hi everyone. Um, a real pleasure to be in front of you all. Um, this event is very beautiful, I would say. Everyone look amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I do, I do cryptocurrency for six years. It's basically the only thing I can do in my life. Um, for the last four years, I concentrate on providing solutions for business to accept cryptocurrency. So basically what we do, we take relatively difficult technology and make it very easy to be usable by businesses. Um, I don't want to go really, really deep because it will take ages. Um, but yeah, we solve cryptocurrency issues for businesses and that is the main thing that, that I believe is needed right now, especially for emerging industries like gambling, betting, esports betting and so on, and maybe even for it. So there we have Vasily from uh, Trustly. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, yeah, I, I work at Trustly. Trustly is a direct bank payments provider that operates across Europe and the uh, US since uh, recently. We, we are, uh, my role at Trustly is, is taking care of all the existing gambling clients. Uh, and yeah, we are strong believers in account to account payments. So this is going to be an interesting discussion with crypto and uh, retail on, on different sides of me. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Simon Dawson from Octo. Um, this is my first time to this conference, which I can't believe having been in the industry for 17 years, uh, working for GTEC and IGT. So uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. So Octo, we're a relatively new uh, player in the payments business, but we see a lot of opportunity in the mobile payment space, uh, wallet space, and, and bringing omni an omni-channel solution uh, for players there. So looking forward to the panel. Awesome. So for the crypto guys, should I hold to my Ripple or should I sell it? I'm just I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not allowed to give financial advice. No, okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, maybe we should know our audience as well. I mean, any of you owns any cryptocurrency here? Any of you trades cryptocurrency? Any of you uses any sort of fintech uh, applications? You use your bank applications, I'm sure, right? Yeah, so that, that's fintech. Um, so let's start with uh, with Max. Um, when, like, if you look at the past two years, um, uh, Zoltan said that two years ago someone said that it was going to re revolutionize the industry. It, it was Max, okay. So it was you. Uh, so Max, what happened in the past two years? Can you can you give us a brief? Uh, yes. So um, I will try to be very quick. Uh, so okay. um, I never never said that blockchain will revolution revolutionize the gambling industry. That was the Tom from SB Tech. Um, <laughs> so, but um, I would say the idea was amazing. I think the project was suspended or closed. But anyways, uh, Playtech, SB Tech, all experimenting with using blockchain and decentralized technologies for betting, right? So to eliminate this central knot between the players and, and providers and so on. So this, unfortunately, this will not work for some time because this is too rocket science-y right now because now you don't really have a proof of blockchain being used anywhere except of the payments so there are many attempts to make games to make providers and 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 to make it in decentralized way but they all are missing a lot of parts and everyone who say oh we will do it in one year they will not do it in one year 
So um, I will just, a, a, again, a bit of a history. So we all operate in internet, right? If there were no internet, we probably would all be mechanics or waiters or so on. Um, so what is internet, right? Internet is decentralized system, right? You don't really need the account to operate with the internet. You need a browser, which is technically your gateway to internet. But you can use internet without the browser if you know how to. Um, the case is that cryptocurrency is, I mean, so blockchain, right? Cryptocurrency is built on blockchain. When I say cryptocurrency, I, I mean Bitcoin, Ethereum, BCH, LTC, all of them, right? This is basically decentralized protocol on the internet. So you can say that cryptocurrency is internet money. Uh, and that is why, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm a bit crazy about that, uh, but uh, the case is that internet is not really controlled by anyone and cryptocurrency is not really controlled by anyone. So that is why for me, it's a bit of a riddle why most of the online businesses still don't use cryptocurrency. You already have all the tools for that, proof of the concept and everything. I was a business developer for Qubits, which ended up very badly last year because of the financial fraud on the B2C business due to very bad, bad, bad mistakes. Um, but the processing volumes from gambling a month were 100 million euros a month cryptocurrency processing in gamble. So the proof of concept is there. You don't have to guess, oh, will it work? Or oh, it's there, it's done, it, it is working. You have now a number of providers who are willing to accept cryptocurrencies and settle them immediately. Okay, this is all about cryptocurrency. It's evolving more and more people have really good gateways to buy cryptocurrency, to sell cryptocurrency, to store cryptocurrency and so on. And I'm also always developing new things, new things for businesses for, for them. About the FinTech, um, I mean, uh, in Germany, I live in Berlin. When I enter the bank, and unfortunately in Germany, you sometimes have to go to the bank, which I find still silly, and there is a queue. There is a queue in the bank to the bank officer. Guys, come on, I think this is just a joke. Going to the bank, when we have all of these online verifications, we have all the tools in the mobile phones, all authorizations, with the with the fingerprint with the face german banks still send you a ton through sms gsm messaging should die what what is what is this sms why do you still use the word like it is secure you can clone the sim card so easily so this these are the things which i think should die relatively quickly i'm not speaking about the bank as an institution which holds money but the bank as an offline office where you go this should disappear definitely uh, and the next step, what is already happening, it's basically on the edge between the fintech and cryptocurrency, there's an online bank inside of your phone without an offline bank. Uh, and cryptocurrency wallet all in one. So in this case, if you want to do the payments to pay your bills in, in euros, you have online bank, you have crypto to do all the payments through the internet. And then the last one, I'm sorry, um, cards cards were never invented for internet. I think this is also a joke that we still all think, oh, how to accept Visa and Master. They were created not for online business. And that is why the, now all these all this attempts to, to use the cards for, for, for online, I think this also should disappear at some point. Uh, because right now, if you think about it, do we really still use like really plastic cards? We all have them in Apple, hey, right, in the Google Pay, when in the supermarkets, in the shops, we pay with the phone. Guys, it can be paid with cryptocurrency. You don't need a bank or a card to do so. We don't use cards anymore anyway. Cryptocurrency or any other currency for that matter. It can be anything, and you don't really need a phone. It can be with any identificator. With crypto, is a public key. You can do it with the fingerprint, with your face, with any authorization method. And the mainstream adoption of, uh, you know, mainstream adoption of all of these will eventually, I would say, um, make paper money disappear uh, in the future. Maybe not in the near future, but in the future. Um, Max touched a couple of points of the PSD too, the fingerprint, the facial recognition. Um, how do you think the PSD2 is driving the payments industry right now? Uh, the PSD2 is, is, is going and If to you can explain what it is, because I don't know. Yeah, if I, payment I service directive that, that uh, the second uh, payment, I'm not, I'm not uh, an expert, but I will share my view of it. Pa payment service direct directive, the second one that regulates uh, the payment, the online payments industry, that also very interesting aspect of it is that, that regulates uh, how third party providers, such as the company that I work for, uh, are 
using the, the APIs of the banks and that opens uh, a variety of possibilities and then also uh, strong customer authentication that will put uh, different payment solutions such as bank payments and uh, cards to a, to a level playing field. Uh, so I believe strongly that PSD2 will bring innovation. We at Trusted believe so. We've been uh, offering uh, direct bank payments for, for 11 years now, and uh, there will be many more companies that are going to try to do the same by the open APIs that will be provided by the banks. Uh, and uh, yeah, competition brings uh, innovation, brings creativity. I agree with, with Max on some points. I definitely think that cards should be removed. I think that the future is account-to-account -account payments. So paying directly from your bank account without a card. But also cryptocurrency, in my view, is something that needs to be more regulated and that uh, the adoption of it is, is, is still not, not uh, there. It's, it's, we are still not ready for it. Uh, and that uh, until we get ready, try direct bank payments. So, I mean, users of, uh, of gaming websites, um, demand for simpler uh, ways of, of paying. Um, you know, for them, if they can have their fingerprint recognized and authorize a payment, well, done deal, like Mike said. Everything should be more, much more simple than where it is today. We've seen the adoption of, of these, and actually, according to the PSD2, um, companies have till end of September 2019, the, the payment service providers, to actually adopt to this new um, directive. Um, Simon, do you think um, the blockchain term, uh, technology um, will revolutionize gaming uh, in the future? Uh, <laughs> that's a you know, big question. Look, look, just to go back what Max said, I think technically speaking, I think I agree with what, what he's uh, saying and, and I think Vasily does as well. But I don't think that's really the right question here. So I think there is a lot of volume of, of crypto going on, especially in Asia and things like that. But you know, I think at another conference I was at earlier this year, one of the head compliance of William Hill was asked about it, and he said, the moment I accept uh, um, crypto, my corporate bank will switch me off. And I think that's the big, that's the big issue here. So, um, and then, you know, with regulators coming in and wanting more and more AML compliance and everything like that, and by the, you know, the mere definition of crypto, you don't know where, where you know, what, where, it's, where the source of funds has come from. So, there, there are challenges there. I'm sure there are ways of fixing them, but right now, today, there, there, are, there, are, there are challenges. There are challenges there. I think what you what you touched on about user experience, I think, is is where it's at right now. Um, people want to be doing things on their mobile, like Max said, um, and and that's where we're focusing our efforts um, for helping payments online as well as offline uh, in the, in the palm of their hand. And that's what they want. And I think that. To answer your question, it's a long kind of way to answer your question, but I think blockchain has its has its has its merits. I think there's a lot of interesting things that can be done in forex. I think there's a lot of money that wants to move around the world uh, for online and offline gaming, and I think that the current system for that is has a lot of transaction costs and is, is clunky. And I think that from what I've uh, been what we've been looking a little bit into, uh, you know, uh, blockchain and, and crypto could be a way of um, helping efficiency there. Uh, but yeah, Max. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to add, right? Uh, I mean, what's 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 the beauty, right? And why we hear about the blockchain and we think that it is a chain of blocks, right? The whole beauty about cryptocurrency, when we don't really speak about anonymous ones like Zcash or Monero, when we speak about normal cryptocurrencies like the well-known one. Um, basically, you can check all the activity ever happening. So if you send somebody money, you can see him receiving money all like all over the, the, the history. You can see movement of all the money ever moved on this blockchain, right? So it's completely open. So if you need to see the source of funds, you just see source of funds. You see where the money are coming from. The network is clusterized. So there is a group of groups of addresses. So you will always see when the money are are arriving from the dark net, from the pornography website, from the gambling website, from exchange. You all you you see this. So for compliance, it is an easy, easy task, you know, to see where the money are coming from. It's, I mean, it's very very simple. I mean, that is why I'm speaking about the cards, right? Because banks say, 
okay, about the William Hill, right? Basically, merchant never receives cryptocurrency. He uses a provider which receives cryptocurrency from his players, but gives him euro, dollar, GBP. They never receive cryptocurrency. Kind of. Maybe it might be a, a bit of a way around. But for example, when banks say that cryptocurrency is bad, come on guys, there is no technology to check the card holder name. So I have a person, I have his documents, and when he pays me with the card, I cannot even check if it is his card or not, with, uh, without asking for him for a selfie or something, right? But if he pays you directly from his bank, you can check no, his no. name, address, date of birth, and everything. No, with, with the banks is much better. I think that Visa and Master are hiding something from us. I think it is a conspiracy thing going there. <laughs> they don't want us to be able to check the names to be able to prevent fraud because they earning from this, then, then how you call this, chargeback uh, disputes or whatsoever. I mean, it's so easy, just, just make a fraud impossible there. I think nowadays there are a lot of legal barriers, perhaps, for I think, the... I think that's exactly the yeah. point. I think, I think, I think all the technology uh, points uh, that have been made are completely valid. You know, I think, you know, the card uh, rails are archaic, right? Um, compared to what can be done uh, these days. I think it's more of a legal and compliance issue and, um, you know, the corporate banks, unfortunately, for, for the regulated market, uh, have the operators by the balls. Um, and, uh, and until, and until uh, they become comfortable uh, with allowing their merchants to accept crypto, uh, I, I think that we're going to be, you know, in this. But I do think that, you know, you know, um, blockchain in itself uh, has advantages, and that will start to seep into the the technology that you know our kind of companies are using. But you know, I'm I'm not quite sure when actual acceptance on on you know in in big regulated markets crypto will be. And after accepted. these uh, legal barriers, after we overcome these legal barriers, imagine in the near future they decide to uh, to to stop uh, placing barriers into cryptos and crypto payments and so on. Where do you think the uh, payments industry will go? Uh, is it going to mean that there's a massive adoption of crypto? The end of plastic money, for I, example. I, I think it's going to evolve. I think it's going to evolve differently. I, I think that I think that you've got to also talk about AI. And I think that you know, you know what M Max was alluding uh, to about you know, just putting a card and you know and and you know the, how you can kind of fake it and stuff like that. It's the same uh, where you know you need to prove who you are by getting a bank sta you know by getting a, a British gas statement or something like that. It can be fake. So a lot of these things, you know, it's it's about passing the buck, um, doing the minimum uh, re required, and and they're not really strong. Kind of security behind them, but I think what's going to happen is in combination of uh, blockchain and AI, where you know there's a huge amount of information on your mobile phone, which will probably do a better job of proving who you are than you know a, a statement from a, a, you know, a utility bill or something like that. And I think that's where you know Vasily and I were just talking before about with where PST2 is going that you know you'll be able to have apps in your phone. It'll be able to detect your banking app. Um, and you'll you'll start flipping between apps, and the whole the whole user experience will become a lot more seamless. And there's a lot going on in the background, uh, a lot of complex stuff, proving identity and, and all this kind of stuff. But it just looks really seamless to the player. And I think that's where a lot of you know innovation is going to happen. Uh, you know, uh, crypto could be a part of that, but I think it's going to be part of a mix because I think there's going to be other strides. In, in payments, and I think I think what's going to be really uh, who's going to kind of win is going to be where the user experience is is really smooth. And um, Vasily, how, how is uh, Trustly tackling this? Yeah, I mean Trustly, I would say I mean it's it, it's not uh, uh, it's it's my opinion, and maybe the 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 what happened in the last two years is, is proving that. Uh, Trustly is is one of the companies that are leading the way of innovation in payments, and all the, all those uh, regulations uh, like uh, the PSD2 uh, are going to help further accelerate the, the innovation, uh, the growth of innovation in payments. What Trustly has done, and, and I think that that is 
that is a clear example of, of how you can uh, optimize the user experience in payments and in gambling is that we introduced, uh, we, we use the, the technology that forms our product and that is allowing the user to pay directly from their bank account but also allowing uh, us to get the bank level verified KYC data on the users directly from their bank or from the third party sources. And uh, nowadays, uh, the technology or the product called Pay and Play, introduced by Trustly in 2015, is an industry standard in some of the Scandinavian markets, and we are trying to roll it out across Europe. So now, instead of, of having a user that goes onto a gambling website and fills this lengthy registration form, and then sends the utility bill or, or bank statement, this user will lead uh, his journey on a gambling website by depositing directly from his bank. And a lot of things, as Simon said, a lot of things is happening in the background. What happens in the background is that we collect the KYC data on the user. We send it to the operator. It's already verified KYC data. The operator creates the, the account for the user. So the user just leads from depositing to playing. And it's a completely seamless experience. So this is, uh, this is how Trustly is uh, bringing innovation into, into gaming and payments. And I believe that with PSD2, with, with the uh, the new initiatives with open banking, we will have more and more of such solutions uh, that will help uh, bring uh, even more seamless user journey uh, to the users and that, uh, you know, overall will bring more quality into this whole payments and gaming space. Uh, speaking about the users, um, there was a market study from Ernest & Young and they have found that over 70% of the adopters of fintech technology, like the apps, um, they still don't really trust their uh, data with uh, payment service providers. Uh, what, what are your approaches to this? How, how do you communicate this to, to your users? Um, how can you reassure them? Um, um, I, I, I want to answer it in a bit indirect way. Okay. Uh, but again, I try to do it quick. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the cryptocurrency had a slightly different approach to handling the data and authorization systems. So why Bitcoin even worked in the first place, right? Why people started to kind of speak about it. Okay, of course it has a problem of adoption, right? Most of the people just don't, don't understand what is happening. And most of the businesses just don't understand what it is solving. So these are the main issues. Uh, but the case is that if you think about hu humanity, like a million years ago, right? So it was very early days of humanity, right? We don't have, we didn't have governments, right? They were just the tribes of the people, right? How do we own things? Physically, if you own the stuff like an X, right? You have an X, right? There were no government to say that you own a K. Here is the document, right? That you own a K. If you live in this, in the cave, you own it. If somebody is stronger, now he lives in the cave, right? Uh, so it's very simple. Then the governments were invented, um, and now the governments are issuing us the papers. You own a flat, you own a car, right? That is like, and how you authorize with the government? With the passport and the face. You say, I'm authorized, I'm the owner of the car because I have a passport. If you don't have a passport anymore, you cannot even prove that you own a car. With cryptocurrency, the concept of owning is different. You like all this kind of internet thing is, is has a name IT, right? Information technology, right? Uh, information is basically the, uh, the authorization in the internet in most of the cases. I'm trying to speak simple, but anyways, cryptocurrency is the first example in the, in, in the history of humanity when you can own something which has value by having information without a need to authorize anywhere. So when I hold Bitcoin, the definition of ownership is that I have a private key, which is a piece of information. So the case is that with crypto, with crypto, if you want to hold cryptocurrency, you don't have to create any accounts anywhere. There is not. This is this is the idea of decentralized technology, right? You don't have to to when you create a Bitcoin wallet, you don't have to create it with somebody. You create it locally on your computer, and there is a key there. So th this is... I think you just did a bit of a SWOT analysis, like you did the strengths, and and I told you one of the weaknesses. No, and but where is the opportunity here? Because if, if people so don't understand this, like uh, that that's the thing. Oh, no, it's, it's slowly coming. It's slowly coming. We just kind of like don't really see it in everyday life. We just hear about it more often here and there. But before you really say like, okay, so what is that? 
you of course will not get that. It's the way you communicate as well. Maybe I mean, the... it's like with internet, right? Internet was before I heard about internet many, many years, right? And now everybody knows. I think it will come. And speaking about the data, of course, unfortunately, because of all the regulations, AML and the KYC, I love them. Uh, but the case is that even with crypto, with cryptocurrencies, to be able to buy and sell cryptocurrencies, you, have, you still have to submit the KYC. And the problem with users sharing the KYC, I think there is only one way to kind of solve it in, the, in slightly different way, is to create a centralized holder of the KYC, right? It can be banked, right? And then the person authorizes everywhere with the token, so that he doesn't send his uh, documents everywhere, like to all the casinos, right, to all the banks, to all the wallets, and so on. He uploaded it in one place, right? It can be tokenized, it can be on the blockchain. But anyway, so there is a centralized place where KYC is stored. And then when he opens a bank account, then the bank account requests the access to the central storage, receives it, and so on. And maybe, anyways, I think it should be done in that way because really, I, I have to send my documents everywhere in the world, like almost every week. Yeah, and uh, so moving away a bit from this more technical and KYCs, which you mentioned, uh, uh, Simon, when it comes to your the markets of OK2Pay, okay um, you have three main products, OK2 Banking, right? OK2 Gaming, and OK2 something else? Wait a second. Yeah, that's the one. How do you decide in which markets you're going to expand? Do you have any legal barriers, for example, if you want to operate somewhere else in another country? You, you currently operate from Athens, right? Yeah, so we're, um, we have a PI license um, and um, e-money license um, out of Cyprus, so we're covered for Europe. And obviously, you know, regulation and compliance is very important, just like at, at Trustly. Uh, so, you know, that that's the backbone of, of, of what we do. So, yeah, I think I think coming back to to what you're saying about, you know, the people's information, I think that GDPR has obviously done a lot of help there, and I think that the base has definitely been lifted. Uh, but. I think that um, people are starting to use their uh, their information like a currency, and I think if the user experience is good enough, they're, they're prepared to sign on for it. I think when you see, I think that's where the explosion of being like uh, companies like Revolut, they offer like a better user experience, and and the players are prepared, and sorry, the customers are prepared to go for that. And I think that's I think that's like I keep coming back to it, and I've said, but I think I think user experience is is really important, um, and putting the information and, and the experience where the player wants it and we see it on, on their mobile. It's almost science fiction nowadays, like when I'm authorizing a payment with my face. Yeah, uh, and we used to see that in movies some, some years ago. Yeah, and, and I think I think this kind of, um, I, was, I was talking to someone the other day about it and I think that, you know, uh, I live in London and, you know, you can, you've been able to pay for a number of years with your mobile phone through Apple Pay or Google Pay on the tube. And, you, you know, a few people started doing it. And then suddenly you, you walk through and you see three or four p other people doing it. You, you suddenly think, why, why aren't I doing that? And you're like, that's really cool. Uh, and then suddenly you don't take your, your card out of your, out, of your, out of your wallet anymore. And it's like this crowd effect. And I think, you know, um, I kind of liken to it to a cliff. You know, there's, there's not much adoption. And then suddenly there's huge adoption. And I think that's what we're going to see um, in, in these new kind of technologies and stuff like that. They'll be really slow. And then suddenly you wake up and the world's changed. Um, you know, through through huge adoption. So I, I think that's I think that's the kind of way yeah, it's going to go. But we, we're we're mainly operating um, in in Europe, southeastern Europe, and, and places like that, and we're in Eastern Europe. Uh, Vasily, since we have uh, we're here doing a two year revision, what do you think it's going to be two years down the line as well? How do you think this is going to change, even um, for Trustly? Because I mean, I think that that definitely we will see some more innovation. Uh, again, I'm coming back like a broken record about the, the PSD2, and it is uh, maybe painful now at the beginning, but I think that such uh, regulations uh, uh, will bring more uh, players to the fintech space, more people with cre creative ideas that will bring uh, more innovation, better user experience, and that is something that, that is inevitable. That, that will happen. So you have like a design first approach. First you design your app solution for the users and then you think about everything else. So well, we are trusting, no, we, we are trusting, I mean, uh, our founders, 
came from gaming and uh, in 2008 uh, we uh, they found the Trustly and they were trying to solve the problem of, of fast payouts that was unheard of in the gaming industry at that point even now today probably many of you are using different uh, betting websites where you cannot pull the money back to your account in you know before one to, to five days more likely five than one and uh, w trustly led by by bringing instant payments into the into the gaming space uh, so what we are actually looking for is what do the customers need they needed fast payments we found a way through different integrations with banks and banking networks across Europe and now even in the US to, to, to give them that. But now the users are, you know, the, the new generations, the, the millennials, the, the young people uh, are shifting. Th their attention span is very short. They are using their mobile phones a lot. So what you as a payment provider need to do is find a way to, to respond to their needs and their issues. They don't want to go and send the bank statement. They don't even want to go to the bank, like Max said. That's true. Many people don't. So what, do, what, what are we supposed to do? We need to find a way to help them cross that gap and offer them a better user experience. And that is what is going to make a difference between payment companies, but also between gaming companies. Uh, and this is how I see the, you know, the next two years. That competition is going to bring quality. Sure. Um, and uh, the, the gaming industry itself, um, why does it need crypto payments? Why, why do you think for the, for the industry to evolve? Mm -hmm. Because you're, I mean, I, I yeah, saw yeah, that you were a um, bit of a revolutionary guy. So yeah. how do you think that, you know, all the operators around us uh, um, need the crypto? I mean, for, the, for, the, for, for, for the operators, the pitch is very simple, right? You can collect payments from all over the world. Right, the fees are much lower than you used to have from cards or PaySaf group or so on. They are irre irreversible, so the customer cannot request a refund and so on. Uh, op like your provider will s will exchange you any cryptocurrency into the currency that you want on your player account on the fly, and there is now technologies for instant acceptance of the payment, so you don't have to wait for blockchain confirmations if you ever heard about them. So it's instant, cheap international, irreversible, no rolling reserves, you can request settlements every day, right? I mean, if, if, you, if, if I ask you to invent the perfect way to accept payments over the internet, you would probably invent cryptocurrency. And uh, for the players, for gamblers, if you think about that, why kind of like cryptocurrency goes very well with gambling, because cryptocurrency fluctuating in price all the time. So the person holding cryptocurrencies, he already gambling. So, so gamblers kind of like cryptocurrency and also what they really enjoy that, for example, they can do, uh, they can play in, in many casinos in one day. So speaking about quick uh, deposits and the payouts with crypto, right, you can deposit on one casino, play, win, withdraw immediately from one casino to another casino, play some bets on the live events or whatsoever, withdraw again to, to the marketplace and get them on your bank account next day in the morning, right? So in one day, you played on few, on few casinos with the same money. Um, okay, you can, uh, depends. For example, I now opened, this is my good friends. They did what I want to do. They have an online bank with the crypto wallet in one application. So with the Revolut, you can buy cryptocurrency, but you cannot withdraw. <laughs> you can sell cryptocurrency, but you cannot deposit cryptocurrency. So it's like a closed loop. You can buy and sell. But now, my friends, they did online bank with the Bitcoins in one application. So you withdraw from the casino there. You sell immediately. You withdraw in the ATM. What's the app name? 10 minutes. Bitvala. Okay. I'm going to take that. 10, 10 minutes. So, so the gap is closing. So I would say in the two years, I think the gap will be closed almost completely. And at least for the countries where you don't really have a lot of problems with the documents and so on, let's say in European Union, entering in and out cryptocurrency would be minutes. Depositing to, to to the merchants in and out are seconds. So, I mean, yeah, it I doesn't seem like I a no-brainer. I think there's only the legal issues done, to overcome. I think it's a, it's a done game, right? I think it will work. So, but what is the problem with planning? Is as you said, in cryptocurrency there is a pl problem with planning because when you have a roadmap for half a year, you suddenly realize that in three months is uh, invalid anymore because industry changed. And then you have to create, an, so it's very hard to plan because industry is changing 
so quickly. I mean, if you are not really following what is happening there, it's crazy. Like when you remember what was a year ago, you're like, oh my God, it was a next era. So it's, it's very quickly. Changed. And apart from all these positives, I mean, for example, can you um, tell the audience if there are any you know, negatives about the, the crypto adoption as well? For example, being so volatile in the markets, that Bitcoin goes from 10K to 5K in a couple of days. I, I just think like what I, what I said before is that, is that um, it, it's, not, it's not widely accepted in, in, in regulated markets for what I explained before. But I think coming back to, to your original question, I think that we're all kind of innovating in, in our own space this year. And I think one thing is that the game industry is super competitive. If, you, if you're an operator, you're spending a lot of money on resources to improve your player experience, get the best games, get, get the best odds, all those kind of things. That takes a lot of time and resources. Then, if you you know if you want to stay ahead, you know on what Max is talking about, what Vasily is talking about, what I talk about. There's a lot going on in the payment space as well. So to do all of that if, as a gaming company and and stay ahead of the game, that's really hard, and it's going to cost you a lot. So I think that you know what's going to take the gaming industry and operators forward um, is is partnering, partnering with fintech companies like ourselves, whichever whichever way you believe it's going to go. I think that strong partnerships where you know the fintech guys can can focus on those developments whichever way it goes and then the and then the gaming operator can focus on what they do well i think that's going to move uh the ball forward yeah, i don't think you were. You were. No, no, i think that we got covered i mean i, I agree the, 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 there are issues with crypto there are advantages it is not regulated today it can be used for for different stuff that does not bring uh the, the feeling of security across different uh, players in the in the e-commerce, gambling, payment providers, banks, uh, operators, and th these these issues have to be solved um, so it can be widely uh, you know adopted across different uh, uh, countries. And uh, yeah, there is definitely potential, but I think that uh, yeah, it's there are still a lot of question marks that that has to be have to be answered uh, or solved before we can we can see that widely adopted. And during that time, there are already technologies and innovation that is happening across gaming and payments, like I was mentioning before, that is going to be used already. You know, that is already being used and will be used. Uh, you know, in the upcoming months and years. So two years, like Max said, in two years everything should be pretty. In much two years, it's going to be better, but still not there. <laughs> not there. I mean, speaking about regulation, right? I mean, there are some crypto licenses. This maybe not all of them like recognize them, but for example, in Europe, this would be Gibraltar and Estonia. With Malta, there is still kind of a big question mark. Uh, but like, for example, like speaking with the banks, with the license is much easier. Who knows? Probably I will get accounted at Trustly as well with the crypto license. Um, does anyone from the public have, uh, from the audience, have a question for the panel? It's money, like Oleg said, you know, everyone wants money. He said it in the previous panel. Yeah, there's a question there. Thank you. Uh, it's actually not really a question, more of a comment, uh, because uh, you were mentioning a lot of the advantages of crypto in the gambling space, and I can see the room is quite perplexed about that. But there's one thing that you didn't mention, which is the audience that uses crypto are, is made up of gamblers. Uh, I'm from Ethereum. I'm, I'm actually creating a platform uh, based on, on crypto. Not that I don't care about fiat, and in the future I want to go there as well. But um, I, I can tell you from experience, a lot of these people are definitely not risk averse. You would not be able to stand up the up and downs of the crypto market if you were a risk averse person. That's why the services that work most on blockchain are actually betting services. So um, in, in my opinion, the betting operators are missing out on an audience that could generate a lot of money. Okay, so there's a specific market for Betting using crypto, definitely. Okay, that's yeah. all. from Ethereum. You said Ethereum. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Wait, but um, I'm, I was saying, I was saying that uh, there is no price risk on the merchant, right? All the incoming deposits are getting converted instantly into GBP, euros, USD, and you get the settlements as you get from the paysafe, right, or from your acquirer. 
So there are no risks for an operator, except of the, of the provider disappearing. Yeah, I mean, nothing that you said was, was wrong. I'm not, I'm not commenting in that way. I'm just saying that one element that was not touched is really the personality of these uh, uh, crypto people. Uh, they are risk takers by definition, and they like to bet and they like to gamble. So and what do you say about cryptos which are stable? For example, like a tether. For example, you can you can still use cryptocurrency, yeah. which is baked one to one to fiat. You, you can. I mean, the the way that actually we wanted to use the stable coins is for players that don't want to have an extra volatility coming from crypto movements when they bet, because you have enough, you know, uh, of movements in the odds and all that. You don't want to come in the one. No, but they volatility. don't bet in crypto. They yeah. so like. Uh, most of my clients are classical casinos. They don't have cryptocurrency balances. Of course, um, I have um, a big crypto casinos as well as my clients, but most of them say, Max, I don't care about crypto. Just give me the way to accept payments from all over the world, cheap and instant. And I said, yeah. here you go. So players don't bet in crypto. Basically, creating betting on crypto is very difficult. So I. Like you are in a very well, challenging well, space. Well, uh, it is not very difficult if you ignore the decentralization part. You mentioned it at the beginning. I never believed in that. It's it's a it's a hype. I actually don't believe it will be like that in the future. Uh, when I when I started on Ethereum, the whole story was you know we're going to use decentralization decentralization so that we cannot screw the customer with technology. Even Vitalik started Ethereum because Blizzard changed the power of his sword in World of Warcraft. Yeah. No more centralization, it's bad. But I actually have always said that the best way not to screw a customer as a company is not to screw the customer. So it is not about technology blocking you from doing that. So we're, we're accepting crypto uh, payments, but mm, the whole thing then runs on a database and is centralized. And it's more about giving an op the option to, to bet in crypto and get the on yeah, so I mean, uh, just to so the picture of We're the gambler, right? Panel. Some of them they really want they really want to deposit Bitcoin and play in Bitcoin, right? But for most of the big brands, this really would screw the relationship with the banks and so on because they offer to play with the quasi currency, which is not even a currency. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you use it just as a payment method, right, to call to collect the payments, but deposit to player in euros and GBP, then when when your provider has a license then you can run away with the questions with your regulator and so on. But MGA and UKGC are still exploring the opportunity. We'll see. Any further questions from the audience? Guys, do you want to do any final remarks? Do you want to say anything else to, to finalize, to wrap it up? Uh, it was a real pleasure speaking in front of you all. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. It was nice uh, being part of this panel and uh, yeah, we should have more discussions like this where, where we have opposing opinions on, course, on, on the course. same topic. I think it's very interesting. Thank you. I think we also need an operator here uh, that is that wants to adopt the technology, perhaps, or has something different to say. Uh, maybe next time we can think about that. Yeah? Cool. Thank you very much, guys, and enjoy the rest of the awards now.